Hey, New Life Church, this is Pastor Jake. I'm glad to be with you guys again as we continue our track Bible reading plan. Right now we're in the book of Leviticus and there's no uh, there's no getting around it. Leviticus is kind of a challenging read because we don't understand. It feels like a lot of these things that we're reading feel like just arbitrary laws and rules and, and you don't understand why. But uh, I'll always remind you guys what I remind everyone about reading the Bible. The more that you do it, the easier it gets and the more you start to pick up and understand why God is commanding and giving instructions about the things that he's done. And, and so if you guys remember, we just finished Exodus and out of Exodus, uh, God has created a tabernacle. God instructed Moses and the Israelites to create a tabernacle so that God can be with his people so that, um, so that he can dwell in a holy spot where he can be with his people again, kind of like the Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden was a place where heaven and, and earth overlapped and God could be with his people. And so God desires to be with his people and he creates this tabernacle for Israel so that it could be uh, like a little miniature Eden. And uh, so at the very end of Exodus, Moses, the tabernacle is constructed and the glory of God falls on the tabernacle. The only problem is Moses, he can't go in because he's still impure. He's still unholy. He's still unclean. And so the theme that we're going to see all throughout the, the book of Leviticus is the holiness of God, because the idea of God being so holy is very important because he's so good. He's so pure. He's so holy that if he comes in contact with things that are impure. They get destroyed. And we see that in uh, chapter 10. Leading up to chapter 10, we've learned a lot about the priesthood. God has given rituals uh, throughout the first week. And then we get to um, a section now where we're learning about the priesthood. God ordains uh, Aaron and his sons to become priests. That will then mediate between God and unholy people so that they would help the people to be consecrated, made right before God and become pure. And so uh, God ordains Aaron and his people, and then uh, they're consecrated, and, and then Aaron offers, makes an offering to God, and God accepts it. But then his sons, Nadab and Abihu, they end up completely neglecting the holiness of God. And it feels like it's a little bit of an extreme or harsh response, but there is no other response when it comes to the holiness of God. What happens is Nadab and Abihu, they come before a holy God. Uh, they try to bring what they said is a strange fire. They used things that were not ins uh, instructed to be used in order to make offerings to God. And, uh, and, and it also, most scholars will agree that they believe that they came before God drunk. And because later, uh, shortly after, it's, uh, the Lord speaks to Aaron specifically and says, you and your sons are not to drink wine or any other fermented drink whenever you go into the tent of meeting or you will die. He's, don't get drunk or, or drink any sort of alcoholic beverage before you go into the tent of meeting because you might die. And, and so they, they believe, a lot of people believe that uh, Nadab and Abihu were drunk. When they came before the Lord, they were just doing whatever they could to try to be made right with God because they're supposed to do it, you know. And God, what he does is he, he allows them to die. And, and in this weird moment, we're like, what, God, why did you kill them? Rather than just try to like correct the situation, why did you kill them? God specifically makes it known that my holiness will not be violated, no matter what. And he says this, he says, um, at the Lord spoke after uh, Nadab and Abihu died. He spoke and says, among those who approach me, the priests, he says, I will be proved holy. And in the sight of all people, I will be honored. These priests are crucially important because they had firsthand interactions with the holiness of God. So then they were supposed to reflect the holiness of God. And it said, and, he, and God says, among those who approach me, this these priesthood, I will prove to them that no matter what you do, I cannot stop being holy. I will be holy. And whenever you start to recognize that how holy I am, and you start to reflect my holiness to the other people in the sight of all people, I will be honored. Guys, the thing that's the reason why the book of Leviticus is so challenging is because we have no end to how depraved we are. There's no end to how sinful and unclean we are. And we have no, absolutely no reason or right to come before a holy God. And yet he says, I'm going to always create a way so that you and I can be together. 
He's always trying to do that. And so it's crazy to think how holy God is, how much we don't deserve to be in his presence. And then what does he do just to put it, everything right? He sends his own son to be the one and complete sacrifice for all of our sins that whenever we accept the offering that Jesus made for himself with his life, that we are, we are made holy, not because of anything we've done, but because what was done for us and the blood that was poured on us and made clean. We do not deserve it. And yet Jesus gave his life for us. And because Jesus gave his life for us, it says in, uh, it says in um, I believe it's in Peter, it says that we have then become a chosen people, a holy priesthood. We are the ones now, followers of Jesus, who are to be the holy priesthood to the world. And now we are the ones who get to interact with God's holiness. And we are the ones who are instructed to demonstrate this holiness to the world. And so, guys, when you go this week, I encourage you, get into God's presence, but don't rush in with a whole bunch of prayers saying, God, will you do this? God, will you do this? But sit there and just let God reveal his holiness to you and thank him that you're even allowed to come before him right now because of what Jesus did for you. And out of that awareness, then lean into God, ask for the things that you need, pray for people that need prayer, and be sure that as you go throughout the week, you are reflecting God's holiness to the rest of the world because this world desperately needs it. You guys have a good week.